This is a very special three questions with my friend Dwight Carter. There we go, man. Love it. All right, I'm really pumped because I actually it's Saturday morning and uh, I just text Dwight this morning. I'm like, let's do a podcast because Dwight has a new book out and it's called Be Great Five Principles to Power Your Legacy as an Educator. I go, look at that. Did it change? What's the timeout? What's the timeout? All right, the title. Did is, you change it? We changed it. We changed it because um, that didn't that didn't resonate with me. What did you change? Okay, what did my, you change my, it my to? Title is. I got to um, talk to your whoever's publishing your book. I got to talk to them. <laughs> because yeah, my title is uh, "Be Great: Five Principles to Improve School Culture from the Inside Out." Okay. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Oh, you learn yeah. something new every day. When did yeah. you change this? Oh man, it was a couple months ago. A couple okay. months ago. Oh, again, the whole legacy thing, it just didn't, it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't here for me. It wasn't in my heart. It, it's, it was head, but I'm like, that's not, that's not, that's not the message I want. What I want is I want everybody to understand that we have to stop looking at, looking for programs and frameworks and 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 package things to change and improve school culture it has to come from within i love that so my, and so my principles focus on what can each of us do internally based on what we believe and expect how school culture should be to make sure outwardly that school culture becomes what it is it can't be forced upon it's got to come from the heart I, so that's so, what we'll stand for so you know typically what some publishers would do is they would say, you know what, let's start over again. And I'm not doing that because no. I think it's actually really important to say like, hey, that is, I love the explanation because it, yeah. this is actually part of the book writing process. Absolutely. Do you know, do you know, what? I, I know you know this. I can write a book, no problem. Titling a book, that mm -hmm. is like really, really hard, right? Like it yeah. is like, it, it is like stay up all night. And I'm yeah. sure like that probably, how many iterations did you go through through that process? That was the most frustrating part. Cause again, when you write a book, you think you got it. But then I'll, then I also right. said, this, this is, this is trash. So I know my editors are going to make it better. <laughs> and, and I just, I stopped, I had to get out of my head. I had to get out of my head. Just like, you know what, just get it down, put it on paper. That's what the editing process is for us to clean it up, uh, pull, pull things out of you. Right that you that you are not able to articulate at the point but with a different perspective it'll it'll come through so that was yeah that was it was a frustrating process but um the team was phenomenal very patient with me very very patient hey. well <laughs> hey do you know do you know and like you and i talked a little, obviously a lot about this book as you're kind of going through the process and you know i'm always cheering you on and i just love talking to you you and i have like have had so many deep conversations and absolutely. i absolutely love it and one of the things that and one of the reasons I, I love doing this podcast is obviously we want to promote the book and get people to know that it's out there. But I think it's really powerful to talk to the author, talk about the process, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there. I, I, wanna, I, I love that you talked about this, this like inner need, because mm -hmm. a lot of times um, people don't see themselves as writing a book. They see that like these things are something someone else should do. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's a lot of the problems that we have in education is that we're like, hey, well, the system and i'm like well the system is kind of made up of people right yeah. it's like yeah. you we say that but like i actually have a lot of control over the things that i do every single day in my classroom like i have a i'm, I'm you know this about me i got a, i got a little bit of an ego about this stuff and if you tell me i can't do something you you watch, watch then, now i'm mad <laughs> now now i'm going now i'm gonna prove to you i can't do right. it right right, right. so i think that's that's part of it too so um, at, in line with the three questions, there are a few questions I wrote down that I want to uh, ask you about this process. Okay? okay. So first of all, the, I know if you can actually tell a little bit about the backstory first about, you know, the idea of be great and yeah. how you came to that part. But, and I think this kind of ties into that. Like what inspired you to write this book in the first place? Uh, wow. That is, that's a long answer, but I'm trying to keep it short. What inspired yeah, that's me? That's why we have a podcast. You're talking yeah, about it. Come on. Yeah. So what inspired me was actually, uh, you were the one that constantly kept, you know, you were pushing me, Hey, get the big, get the book written, get it written. My wife was also a huge inspiration. She really talked to me about the white, you got to get this message out there because you, you live this, so get it out there. Um, and I had other, you know, other mentors and whatnot, 
But what inspired me to actually put the pen to paper, it was at the start of the pandemic. And I remember I, I sent you and Paige a text. Yeah. And it was two words. I'm ready. That was it. And it's Paige, like basically the Michael Jordan coming out of retirement <laughs> text. It was like, I'm back. It's like two yeah. words, right? It That's was, all you need. Two words. I'm ready. And then once I did that, once I put it out there and shared it with, with you, you two and then shared it with other people, I couldn't, I couldn't go back on that. Yeah. So the inspiration came from just the need to get the message out there because I've been sitting on it for so long. Um, you know, had a publisher who was interested. You got, I, you know, years, for years, man, for, for years, years. years. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to let you guys down. I didn't want to let myself down. I didn't want to let, let my family down. So I wanted to get the message out there. And when the pandemic hit, time was no longer an excuse. Right. I had to utilize the time. And so it became my pandemic create creative project, even though it was still a very challenging process. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it though. You know, it's, I actually, when you said that, I thought of this meme that said, uh, someone put out basically, yeah, if I said, if I ever had time that I would write a book in the pandemic, it's like, no, <laughs> no, I just do I don't want to write a book. It's kind of right. funny, but you did it. And I appreciate I that. It. Yeah. So I actually, I got other two other questions, but I want to add, I wanted to give you a, a like a, a, a part B to this one. I think this is, um, really important to me and it's actually like something i'm kind of going through and i remember like reading through because i got to write the forward i was blessed to do that thank you and you um talked about the idea of being great and a mm -hmm. lot of people will hear this and they're like i don't need like this toxic positivity like that's like the catchiest phrase right now for whatever mm -hmm. reason right and this idea like that you're just like saying don't don't worry about anything you know let's just be, and it's like no and you talked about this really distinctly in the introduction about how like you you even struggle with this concept sometimes that you, you know, like it's hard to like be this sometimes and like i i i really i think dwight part of it too when i was like because i i don't just write the forward i read your book before i write it right like that to me is a very important aspect of it i want to know you know what i'm talking about and that really hit me because I felt like I've I've been on this really positive, powerful trajectory over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But when I read that, I was I was kind of on the on a downward, and I was like struggling, and I was like, it was almost like I felt guilty for being positive because now you kind of got like a little bit of a imposter syndrome. Like yeah. I'm not living yeah. to the things I'm encouraging people to other be, but it's not about you know every day <laughs> is perfect every day you know right like is that is that something that you thought about too and you're kind of writing oh, absolutely up, right? no and so one of the challenges i i continue even to this day i still have to overcome is who really wants to read this and who needs to read this and why would anybody want to like that's the question why would anybody even want to read this and so every just ne nearly every day i was writing i kept the story i kept telling myself was this is stupid like who cares right who cares? And the reality was, the reality is, is I was being my true authentic self. I, sh I, I was being very vulnerable in, the, in, in, in nearly every single page that I wrote because I was, I was talking about, well, what, what does it mean to be great? And for me, that is an acronym, mm -hmm. you know, and as, as educators, we live in the world of acronyms. Right. So it, be great is an acronym for be grateful, relational, enthusiastic, enthusiastic, authentic, and teachable. Those are five key principles that we all can live by. But I dive deep into what does those really, what does those, what do, do those words really mean in action? Mm -hmm. Not just words in action. And so I, I talk about how does being grateful improve school culture? How does being re relational improve school culture? How does being enthusiastic and mm -hmm. And I, I kind of flipped that that one on his head because we automatically think enthusiasm is just a high level or outward expression of emotion. Right. In reality, it, what it boils down to is enthusiasm is all about purpose. The root of the word is about being inspired or mm -hmm. purposeful. So I'll talk about what's our purpose as educators. In our world that's very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, we can sometimes lose our purpose, become downtrodden by all the negativity, um, all the pressure, the educator guilt, ed educator shame. Yeah. That we may feel and we we forget our purpose like what do we really get and get into education for 
the A is being authentic. And I talk about that in the book quite a bit in terms of one that's, mm -hmm. that's really been a challenge. But also one that's been a very fun journey for me. Actually, actually, the last I'll say ten years, it's been a really intentional journey to become my authentic self. And then the final one is being teachable, and that's just overcoming our incompetence to, to want to learn new things. And so, you know, it's it's been a it is a journey. It's been a journey, and it will continue to be a journey until the day I die. And so, I hope educators are inspired by, you know, hearing true stories from me but also some phenomenal contributors about you know how they how they implement one of the principles um in their life as an educator and as a, as a person well you, you the, the actually like of all the things that you just shared the one that really they really stuck out to me was the the notion of being authentic not not because it was one of the principles but because you were that the entire book. Yeah. There's stuff that I was like, wow, he, he's out in himself right yeah. now. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, there, yeah. There's stuff that's like, wow. Like, yeah, but you, you, I think a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot we can learn from other people's missteps and, you know, things that we do it, in the hopes that we share those stories that they don't necessarily go through it or they don't have to go through that process. Like learn from the mistakes that others have made. Yeah. And the, the thing that, and I, like this is a little behind the scenes of the the publishing world. Um, I I get really frustrated with endorsements, and here's why. A lot of times when you see, I mean, I don't know if I should be saying this, but this is true. A lot of times when I see endorsements, the endorsements for a book, you're like, this person did not read this book. Like I know this, right? And you can just see it. And the endorsements you got for your book were so authentic, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, and oh my god did people love this book and mm -hmm. i was like it was like pretty amazing to see how well they understood the book and yeah. how much they took away from it so like this is one of the like the most uh, most authentically endorsed book i've seen mm -hmm. which is pretty powerful so you must have done something right away to compel people to actually read it not just write a blurb yeah man i i i'm man i'm like almost to tears just listen to you say that because yeah, no, that's uh, true because it was i was like pleasantly surprised by the endorsements that i received the one that really hit home and like hit me in the heart was from uh, dr tara campbell mm -hmm. she wrote a dissertation and, and oh, the, oh yeah and, and, the one, and, and, she, and her first comment was this hit me exactly where i am right now i'm on a spiritual journey I'm, I'm struggling with some things and to hear your voice and to see your words, that's exactly what I needed. And she went on and explained more details to why. And I was like, wow, she, she read every single word on every single page of that book. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and, and I think the timing is, is perfect because we're coming off of this. Oh, I can say we're in an endemic ish. Right. Um, I don't know. I might have to hard. edit that out. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to get kicked off YouTube for that. <laughs> it's been a hard two years, two and a half, three yeah. years for educators, harder than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and many are struggling trying to figure out, is this something I still want to do? Mm -hmm. And then how can I, how can I be my true self as an educator? And how can I take care of myself so I can take care of others, including my students and my colleagues? Um, and then how do I continue to learn, not learn because I'm forced, but learn because I truly want to keep growing. And so I, I address those things in the book quite a bit, um, sharing personal stories, but also bringing in, like I said, some phenomenal contributors who share their stories. Um, Principal Kefele is one of them. Megan Anderson is another one. Sarah Johnson. Um, they just they really talk about where they how they applied the principle that they chose to write about um, to become, like I said, just a. a a great educator still uh, desiring to learn more um, and be, you know, be aligned with their values. So, so this is like a little confession here. Like yeah. I was pleasantly surprised with the endorsements too. And it's because I'm like, Holy Dwight really pulled this off. Cause I've had like, it's you and I have had amazing conversations mm -hmm. and I know you have this stuff, but to actually put it into a book, it's there. It's a little tough sometimes. Right. And I Ooh. felt like, I felt like, you know what? I wasn't pleasantly surprised. Like I actually read the endorsements before I read the book. Mm. I was like, whoa, like Dwight, <laughs> Dwight killed it. Yeah. So I was like, and yeah. then I started reading it and there was like, 
I remember, um, I don't want to like spoil it. There was one part you were talking about something you kind of like your, your uh, interaction you had with a student. I remember this. Oh um, yeah. And geez, I was like, I was like, I was like, like kind of like uncomfortable, like in a movie uncomfortable. Like, oh my God, this is like, this is like, I can't believe Dwight Sarah. And it was like so yeah. powerful. And that, that to me, like there's something really masterful about how you pulled that off. And I was yeah. like, so the, it, it was like, now, if you told me that story, I would also feel uncomfortable, but that's the thing. You actually, it's that conversational piece of like how mm -hmm. you're like sitting there. So I just, I'm, I'm so proud, buddy. Like I'm so proud Thank of it. But I, I, I can, I could do a whole podcast of how proud I am of, of all the work you did, which is why I've been on your case for like years. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? The book is going to come out exactly the time it needs to come out. That's, yeah. that's, you know what I mean? And like, I, I wanted to write innovators mindset forever, but it came out exactly when it needed to come out. And I feel the yeah. same thing. Well, yours. Okay, so the next question I got for you, um, and you kind of touched on this, but this is like a little bit behind the scenes. One of the things I love about, you know, working with authors. So we're going to, you know, there's a ton of things, obviously, other people can learn from what you've learned, uh, you know, over the years and what you've shared in this book. But like, as you wrote this, what was like your biggest takeaway, either from the process, from the content you created? Mm -hmm. Like what, what really, you know, what did you learn from this whole thing? other than your editor doesn't know the title <laughs> well there's there's a whole backstory to the title because there's one that right. i have originally but like i said it, it, the title right. is exactly what it's supposed to be it is and we it was a process of getting there and it just it just it happened um but i'll say the biggest thing is to trust myself and that um i do have a voice mm -hmm. And I have a voice that others want to hear from or hear, yeah, to hear, hear about. And that, that, that's a, that was a huge step for me. Cause typically as again, in my journey to be my, you know, my authentic self, I'm learning to use my voice and use it more often. And I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. And I don't know if I'm answering the question or not. So there you are. You're doing great. I love it. Um, when when uh, it when the the title came back to you know empowering your legacy or i think that mm -hmm. was the word yeah, yeah yeah probably five ten years ago i'd have been like i don't like it but okay you guys right. you guys know best you're the editors and i sat on it for a day or two and i said no i don't i don't like that title that's no, no. that's not what that's not that doesn't resonate with me at all so i want to change it what do you want to change it to i said let me let me sit on it for again give me give me a couple days and then at, when i was working out i kept thinking okay what do i really want this this book to be about what do i really want it to be about and then basically self-awareness self-management relationship management is what was coming through and that's what self that's what culture is all about Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about we have to be able to really think about and embrace the two things in this world that we are, only two things that we control, and that's our attitude and actions. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the inside out part came from. So what I learned was that I have to speak up when the time is needed. I have to speak up. Mm -hmm. If something is not doesn't sit well with me and it's my work, speak up people may not agree with it but use use the voice that i've been right. given right. use use the voice that i've been given so that was the biggest i think my biggest takeaway in this whole process it so, wasn't about the writing process right. or the feedback or the 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 waiting I mean, it wasn't anything about that because that's just that's just part of life and that's just part of the work but i would say the biggest takeaway was just learning to use my voice well and, you know i've been on your case for this for a while right like we, yeah, we were talking years. and, yeah. and there, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm proud that you said that. Thank you. You know, you and I have had a lot of conversations about this, but one of the things I'm really proud of, to be honest with you, as a publisher, is that we always, like, we'll always get feedback and advice, but we, at the end of the day, it's, it's your book. Yep. And that's, yep. that's a really important aspect. And yep. I think part of it too, part of the reason we do this is because, like, we want, first of all, we want, like, it's not, I don't want, I, I, this is, a, I, I hate this. Oh, you need to share your voice. 
do you really mean that? Or yeah. do you mean, do you mean you need to share what I think in your voice? Cause yeah. I don't like that. That yeah. that's, I think, I think we get those two terms mixed up a lot of times. Yeah. Like we're telling kids need to share their voice. Like, except for that kid, that kid needs to shut up because they're saying stuff <laughs> I don't like. Right. 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 And it's like, no, we want you to share your voice and be, like you, your voice, your ideas, your thoughts, and part of it too. And when I actually went through, um, you know, people reaching out to me about writing innovators mindset, I actually had, um, a publishing company basically say, we don't like this. Like you got to change this. You got to change this. You change this, that you need to write this way. Mm -hmm. And then like, here's your contract. I'm like, um, no contract to do what to contract to like do something that I'm not comfortable with contract to like write in a way I would never read. Yeah. So like that was, that's that for me, you know, as a company is very important for us that we actually encourage people like, like we'll we'll say to you like uh, like we never had to say this to you but we've said it to authors before like this could get you in trouble what you're saying right here and the, and and just give you the heads up right because we don't like the one thing that we always say you want the negative feedback before the book is published not after right, right. like that's right. reality but so but we always at the end of the day it's like it's your book mm -hmm. this is this is your voice so I'm glad you said that. okay last question I got for you now we talked about about what you learned from the process what do you hope you know, like maybe one, uh, you know, cause I know we always want to like overall change education, right? Like we want it to make it better for every person. Not only like we always talk about the students, but we want to make it better for the adults too. Right. Yeah, oh, absolutely. you know, and if you make it better for the adults, guess what? It's better for the kids typically. So what do you hope this book will do for educators and education to some extent? Well, my hope is that um, each and every one of us that are in education as an educator, sees the responsibility and the autonomy or the ability to we that we have to improve the school culture mm -hmm. because I, I give practical steps and strategies on how to do that it's not a how-to book any by any stretch of the imagination but it's like okay i can control my attitude which is my you know my disposition my my how i present myself and i can control my actions the things that i do i can i can i can do those two things and that'll influence hopefully influence the kind, the kind of school culture that we want to create. If everybody owns that, man, yep. what types of schools will we have? And so I talk about this, this video that I, that I write about is <clears throat> Maurice Cheeks. Um, oh, cool. I'm going oh, to yeah. I'm going to start crying. Yeah. yeah. When you, you know, the video, I do. A, yeah. I, I share that. And when I present, but also write about that because he exemplified the two things he can, could have controlled in that situation. Mm -hmm. which was his attitude about i'm going to help this young lady his actions here's how i'm going to help her and he did it that young lady was surrounded by a number of adults one adult stepped up to help her out in her time of need right. just one and it was him that that if we do that as educators which you know we do many of us do i'm not saying i'm not this is not a a, a slight to saying it's not happening but if we all had that maurice cheeks mindset Right. That I can control my attitude and actions every single day. My hope is that we will see that we each of us have the power to create the culture that we want so that it's 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 a caring place that's with high expectations and that everybody can reach a level of success. So here's here's the thing, like somebody would say, OK, yeah, Dwight. That's one person, though, right? Like, what you know, what what can I do as one person? But here's the reality of that video. How many people did that action that Maurice Cheeks did in that mm -hmm. moment inspire by watching him go out and do something really positive with it? Absolutely. Right? And he that's right then and there. He influenced that entire arena. Amazing. It was amazing. It's yeah. such a it's such a powerful video. It's yeah. you know, and just check out the links because I actually I'll, I'll link it down below too because yeah. it's a uh, definite. But I'm so proud of you. I'm like I'm proud of this book, but I'm really proud of you. Right. And I, you know, I've been your biggest cheerleader since you and I have met. And uh, I know this is going to be awesome. And uh, I'll tell you, like I said, the endorsements on this, people have absolutely loved it. I know it's going to have a huge impact. And I want you to make sure um, that you you share it with the world. Because I know sometimes you're a little shy about that stuff. I am. I right? Am. Yeah. But you you just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just text you, hey, Maurice Cheeks. <laughs> out there, man. So you're gonna use it against me, huh? <laughs> yeah, I am 100 percent because that is my personality. You okay. anything you say can be and will be used against you in a text message eventually. 
So, hey, so I'm going to I'm going to say it cuz I I I don't know. So, what is the title of the book for anyone that's interested? The title of the book is Be Great: Five Principles to Improve School Culture from the Inside Out. Love it. So, pick it up. Description down below, Dwight. Thanks for that, for for being on the podcast. Get the book wherever you can find it. It's the link in, on to Amazon is down below. Thanks so much for listening. There you go, buddy.